You know what they say, the early bird catches the worm. You live during the most artistically free period in human history. In fact, many of the things people complain about today, like the randomness of modern art, or the constant recycling of trends are an exact, literal result of this. You live and breathe in a time where you and you alone are the one who dictates how your life should be lived and how you choose to express yourself. This has led to such an explosion of talent and creativity that when looking at the diversity of the modern world, it can honestly be overwhelming. I think this contemporary creative freedom is no more apparent than when looking at the modern celebrity. We have Doja Cat, who started off with the cyber cat persona and now seems to be somewhere between a demon or fairy. Lady Gaga, who when she first debuted, looked like some postmodern futuristic piece of art. Or even someone like Lana Del Rey, who chooses to completely reject modernity altogether and sport a more down-to-earth vintage look. In our modern world of endless information, it can be hard to slow down and realize but you are living during a time of immense change with the complete breakdown of any and all cultural or social restraints, which is allowing you to express yourself in any way imaginable. Today, I wanted to talk about this newfound freedom and explain how we got here, how different modern celebrities couldn't exist without it, and where we're headed. What E will look like in AD 2000. We are living in a real life Hunger Games. Now, to really understand how we got here, we need to quickly cover some history, and it might seem off topic, but stay with me here because it will really help you understand the second half of this video. So, for most of human history, art wasn't just pure free expression, but was practical and had a very specific role. Art was mostly intended to convey and document, like historical events or expressing religious belief. And society was dominated by a grand narrative, with the way people lived and expressed themselves being largely constrained by that narrative. This was the law of the land really until the Enlightenment, which for the first time in history said that authority did not rest with God or a religious institution, but within the individual and human reason. Around the same time, especially after the Industrial Revolution, art diversified. But within these different art movements, there were still clear-cut characteristics and rules that defined them. This all broke down with the introduction of postmodernism. Postmodernism, which we are in right now, is a philosophical movement believed to have begun around the 70s and is defined by skepticism, subjectivism, relativism, and rejects objectivity or ideas of grand narratives. So before postmodernism, society was governed by this collective idea of authority and objectivity. We mostly trusted our government and believed that there was a simple, right way that everyone should live. There was a general, collective sense of meaning, and we were aware of the problems plaguing society, but we faced them with optimism and truly believed utopian progress was inevitable. Whereas modernism believed in simple truths, inevitable progress, and had faith in institutions, Postmodernism focused on government failures, societal issues, and was skeptical of grand narratives. Postmodernism focused more on complex, at times paradoxical concepts of truth, and believed that there wasn't truly one way for people to live or think, and that we should appreciate a wide range of perspectives instead of chaining ourselves to a single, objective one. Due to the explosion and reproduction of media that also happened around this time, People now had access to endless, oftentimes conflicting narratives, further facilitating that general collapse of meaning and objectivity. In the arts, postmodernism encouraged pure experimentation and rejected concepts of authority. It was almost like the explosion of art movements that happened post-industrial revolution was the rebellious teen phase of humanity where we began stepping out of our comfort zone and trying different styles, one after the other, until it accelerated so much that it collapsed into a singularity where we rejected authority altogether and said, you know what, fuck it. Anything can be art. How, you ask? Because I say so. And thanks to the seeds that the Enlightenment planted, 
the individual has now become the main decider of things, not some outside authority. This really set off a chain reaction which led to art, culture, and meaning becoming truly democratized. Ironically, while everyone complains that real art doesn't exist anymore, I would argue that there never was objective art in the first place because art in its simplest form is expression and no one can tell you how to express yourself or your ideas. This finally brings us to today and the modern celebrity. Now, whenever I talk about postmodern self-expression, I always have to talk about Lady Gaga. I've said it before in previous videos and I'll say it again, but to me, Lady Gaga is almost like a complete realization of postmodernism in human form. She is the final product, building off of artists like David Bowie, Cher, Madonna, even Lil' Kim, and she helped to bring camp to the mainstream. What was and is so fascinating to me about Gaga is that the way she expressed herself was completely detached from culture, trend, or practicality. She completely rejected the mainstream and expressed herself in this maximalist, absurd way just because she can. She represents this real shift away from objective authority in a complete realization of the idea that anything and everything can go if you're brave enough to pull it off. I never thought I'd be asking Cher to hold my meat purse. I would argue that besides the influences of Lil' Kim, Lady Gaga also played a big part in the futuristic maximalist fashion that has basically become the mainstream today. I would even say that Lady Gaga is a foreshadowing of what's to come with AI and transhumanism, where humans will no longer need clothes or makeup at all to express themselves, but can literally physically transform instead. But I'll talk about that later in this video. All in all, Lady Gaga as a successful artist would not have been possible without the complete rejection of objectivity thanks to postmodernism. Whereas Lady Gaga was revolutionary and forward-facing with her ideas and look, Lana Del Rey was the exact opposite. I had a vision of making my life a work of art and I was looking for people who also felt that way. We live in a time where not only do you not have to follow current trends, but you can also reject the present and futuristic and instead go the opposite direction like what Lana Del Rey has done. Loving her was like shaking hands with the devil. I was born back. Lana Del Rey is a perfect example of the influences of the internet and being able to follow an aesthetic not because it's trendy, but because it's just what you like. Thanks to the near infinite amount of information that is immortalized on the internet, time seems to have become less and less relevant. Now what I mean by this is that the internet has not just democratized society, but also our individual realities. So if you're someone like Lana Del Rey who admires bygone Hollywood glamour, you can immerse yourself in the media of that time, which can make you feel more connected to it than the present. But I guess my main point with Lana is that while technically you could have always dressed how you wanted, before the internet, we didn't have such unlimited access to the past and its fashion, which restricted the possibility of something like Lana Del Rey happening. And because social acceptance was much more important pre-postmodernism, you cared a lot more what people thought. And if you were dressing like someone from, say, the 1910s and 1950, people would have probably sent your ass to the insane asylum and assumed something was seriously wrong with you. Help! He's escaping! You also have to remember that Lana Del Rey debuted during the peak of loud maximalist pop like Nicki Minaj and Lady Gaga making her an almost subversion of the subversion. So what I mean by this is, like I said earlier, Gaga was this accelerationist of postmodernism, which subverted what the typical celebrity was like at the time. So Lana was this rejection of Gaga's rejection in a moving in the complete opposite direction. To me, artists like Lana Del Rey represent this rejection of capitalistic materialism and a turning towards a more simple, meaningful sound. I am wearing, um, it's called, I think it's a designer called um, Aiden Maddox. We actually just, we just got it from the mall, so yeah. Remember, postmodernism resulted in a collapse of meaning and purpose, which was perfect for capitalism, because now you could just fill the void with material and consumption. 
But every time I think about the fact that Lady Gaga and Lana Del Rey coexisted at the same time, it's honestly insane. But it's basically my whole point here that everything and anything goes. You want to remake yourself in the image of Priscilla Presley? Go for it. You want to become an abstract, futuristic piece of art? Perfect. We're in this period in history where there are no rules, and what works, works. God loves you, but not enough to save you. Ethel Kane is another interesting example of subverting expectations. So, Ethel Kane's first studio album, Preacher's Daughter, wasn't even about herself, but was about a character that was created to explore an alternative timeline. A way of reimagining how her life could have gone and to channel and work through traumatic experiences. I always describe it as a cautionary tale because I think it's just kind of everything that I've always been scared of, everything I've been worried about happening, I kind of just dump it into that story and, you know, kind of explore what would happen if life went this way, what would it... It's, it's just kind of a nightmare, honestly, of like, it's, it's kind of all of my nightmares of what could happen in life and... Ethel Kane represents a true subversion of norms, but specifically for the LGBTQ community. What I mean by this is that Ethel Kane is a transgender woman, and despite the hostility of Southern Christian culture, her entire aesthetic focuses on it. Ethel Kane almost reminds me more of Lady Gaga than of Lana Del Rey, in the sense that she completely created a story and character almost entirely detached from her actual lived reality. And I think I saw a meme about this. So straight men have started dressing like 2012 instagays and gay men have started dressing like construction workers. But it's just crazy how we have straight men like Bad Bunny becoming more fluid with their masculinity and queer artists going the other way, dabbling more in an alternative masculine look. And I'm not complaining at all, but I just think it's ironic and goes to show how strong the subversion of expectations are in our culture right now. Now moving to more mainstream modern celebrities, Doja Cat is also an interesting example of subverting expectations and established norms. Uh, I look like a worm. To me, Doja Cat represents this rejection of not just fashion trends or the way someone chooses to express themselves, but of beauty standards and the idea of meaning altogether. To me, Doja Cat is like the first true chronically online mainstream celebrity who is an accurate representation of what Gen Z is really like. Like, due to her submersion in social media, she has clearly become irony poison, and she is so saturated in memes that she tends to express herself in such an unserious, not everything has to have a meaning way. There's one line where I, I the butter toes line, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is like the dumbest line on the album, but I made sure that I didn't push myself too hard. I don't need to prove myself. Like you don't want to take yourself too serious. I as don't need to, but nothing is ever that serious. Mm -hmm. It's never that serious. And I already made a video about the elephant in the room here, but her complete 180 from the cyber cat persona to this edgy demon thing is probably one of the biggest examples of creative freedom. Like she literally just subverted herself and put on this whole horror inspired aesthetic to reject her past and spite the fans who constantly complain about it. I used to like your music, but you treat your fans like shit. Dude, literally suck my cock. I think I'm too fucking famous. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm gonna, I'm not gonna make everyone happy. And that's just that, you know? Honestly, Doja Cat is a whole can of worms that I will make another video about, but what I really find interesting about her is how a lot of her current look and aesthetic is completely reactionary and in response to crazed fans bullying her and trying to get her to fit some past mold. So it's like, due to social media, she has this constant real-time reminder of societal pressures and instead of submitting, she has gone the complete opposite almost troll direction to make a point that she's a human too and should have control over her own self-expression. I've always wondered if we would ever get someone as cunty and subversive as Lady Gaga again, and I think so far Doja Cat comes the closest. Her looks are so eccentric and absurd, and I love how there really are no boundaries with her. Now, when it comes to this purely unrestrained transforming of oneself, like what we see with Gaga and Doja, I also think it's important to mention Cindy Sherman. 
Cindy Sherman is a successful photographic artist from Buffalo, New York, who is best known for her eccentric self-portraits, where she recreates herself as, honestly, any kind of person you could ever imagine. Like, her portraits range from characters that look like people you could find on the street, to the campy, exaggerated, almost non-human. What I love the most about Cindy Sherman is that she is the main subjects of her work, both directly and indirectly. So instead of relying on models to express the vision she has, she uses prosthetics and makeup to completely remake herself in that image. I see Cindy Sherman in the same category as artists like Lady Gaga, even Chapel Roan, who transform themselves into these different characters, which my art obsessed brain just sees as people becoming physical works of art. But what I really admire about Cindy Sherman is that she is a living example of not allowing the restraints of your individuality get in the way of your art or vision. Now, I think what Cindy Sherman does mirrors not just what has become common in pop culture, but also signals a much bigger trend in human society in general. In my humble opinion, I see the period beginning after the Enlightenment to the present as this transitory phase for humanity. Like, we are in this S-curve of our progress where everything, technology, ideas, culture, even ourselves, are changing so incredibly fast. And I view the Enlightenment and postmodernism as this moment where we are shedding the concepts that we have traditionally relied on since basically our beginning. It can also be argued that grand narratives like religion and culture were invented to ease human anxieties and answer a lot of our inherent questions by giving us this roadmap from birth. How to live, what to think, how to dress and act. But now, arguably for the first time, that has been shed and the subjective individual creates the roadmap instead. This is why when looking at the postmodern world, it can sometimes seem so messy compared to the clear-cut uniformity of the past because now everything is so decentralized and information and ideas are reproduced and flow more freely. Now, some argue that this is daunting or even terrifying. On one hand, how do you decide what to believe, how to act, what to live your life for? And on the other, it's truly unprecedented. You have more autonomy and choice than literally ever before. I think ever since the agricultural revolution, humans have basically been exponentially advancing and getting to this biological endpoint where we will eventually merge with our technology and be given complete autonomy over our knowledge and abilities, which will lead to an unimaginable singularity-like existence. Anything this advanced would transcend our ideas of life itself as they would exist outside of time and space. I see this point between then and now as a chaotic, almost puberty-like transitory phase where we go from a stumbling, ignorant, primitive animal to an unimaginably advanced superintelligence. I even see future historians looking back on us with grace and understanding, viewing us as the natural product of being a developing infant species. As our abilities continue to be furthered by our technology, we will eventually be able to take any likeness we desire and express ourselves through our actual, literal, physical form and not just through surface-level mediums like fashion, tattoos, or makeup. The restraints of culture, religion, even resources in general will continue to erode as we move further from the human existence and graduate into something completely new. This is why I see artists like Lady Gaga, Cindy Sherman, even Melanie Martinez as modern, almost primitive precursors of what's to come. The abstract, almost absurd ways these artists choose to express themselves have no relation to any objectivity and happens simply because they want it to. It's a form of pure, subjective, free expression, removed from culture, reason, or practicality. Like I said, right now, this free expression is limited to fashion and makeup, but eventually it will graduate to the physical. But I guess what I'm simply trying to say here is that the moment we are living through right now with the collapse of objectivity and where society is submerged in endless information looks to me like a natural, unavoidable outcome of our advancement. I think when looking at culture and art, you can get a good snapshot of a civilization. And I think the immense diversity we see reflected in it really shows the unprecedented creative freedom we have today. Just remember, Art is literally just expression, and we should be able to do that however and whichever way we want.